to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is the 1.5 Sigma Shift, the almost legendary 1.5 Sigma Shift. Um, it, it, causes, it causes so much confusion, the shift. Um, let's, let's talk about the 1.5 Sigma Shift. Let's talk about what it kind of represents um, and maybe what you're going to use it for. Now the first thing to say about the one and a half sigma shift, this was discovered, this was discovered by Bill Smith. Bill Smith was the engineer at Motorola who did most of the work that eventually ended up with setting the target of Six Sigma as being the target for Motorola's manufacturing processes. And part of the reason he came up with the target was because he observed the 1.5 sigma shift. So what is this thing? Well, let's just draw a distribution. Let's draw a let's draw a six sigma process. So let's have a look. It's going to look something like that. Um, typically, a six sigma process can fit twice inside the tolerance. Why do you want so much room? Because that's essentially what we've got here. We have, when we have a Six Sigma process, we have room. We have room for the process to get stressed, for the process to start to wander backwards and forwards. And what Bill Smith said was, typically this thing is going to go for a wander up to one and a half standard deviations, one and a half sigma. And that's where the one and a half sigma shift comes from and why ultimately the target of six sigma, having a distribution which was half the size of the distribution, it was to deal with the fact that if this thing wandered towards the tolerance, we'd get results here, but we'd still get very few defects, even shifted. And of course, what did very few meant? Well, they worked out this value of 3.4 defects in a million when the process gets shifted. So, does your process really go for a wonder? What is this one and a half sigma for? So I want to just talk practically, because to me, what six sigma is always about, it's always a practical thing. I'm going to use all of this stuff on a process to fix problems and make more money. That's what it's about. So let's talk about the practical reason why the one and a half sigma shift needs to be taken into account. Why you can never get the thing. Why do you need all this room? Surely, look, I'd just do that, wouldn't I? I'd just take my process, I'd stick it on target. Why do I need it to be so good? If I just put it in the middle, everything will be right with the world. Well, let's talk about the practical things that you get here that cause the one and a half sigma shift. The first one actually isn't really to do with the process, it's to do with sample error. If you want to know where your process is sitting, you've got to go take a sample. Let's say you do a great thing and you take 30 to 50. Well, of course, when you sample, what do you create? You create, of course, an estimate of where your process is sitting. In other words, you can never really know you put the process dead centre like that. And of course, if you took another 30 to 50, you'd get a slightly different result. It looks like the process is moving. It isn't really. It's sampling error. It's because the estimates are all different. But actually, you can never know you're centred. So if I can never know I'm centred, even when I'm doing all the right things, taking all the right sample sizes, I need a little bit of room to deal with that estimate. Part of that rule is this one and a half sigma shift. What else is it for? So it's for sample error. It's also for setting error. Because in the same way that even if you took 30 to 50, you can never really know where you are. Um, the technician has a problem because he never sees this picture. I mean, when you look at this picture, and you say, if I ask the question, did I set the machine? Are you happy that I've set the machine correctly? You'd say, yeah, you're dead center, well done. The 
technician never sees this. It's easy when you draw these pictures. I always, it's amazing. Whenever I set a machine on a whiteboard, I always set it dead center. Because it's dead easy to do it when you see this picture. What does the technician see? Well, let's take a look. What the technician sees, of course, is one data point at a time. There's the target, the nominal. They're trying to hit that. What are they going to see? Well, I'll set the machine. I'll take a data point. No target. Then how do you? Okay, take another one. What do you think? You want target? You want to make an adjustment? Are you happy? If you put it in the center, still down now. Take another one. What do you think? Not sure. He takes another one. How many is he going to take before he's before he's happy? Um, by the way, to do this properly, you should use a control chart. If you use a control chart this process will work much better but without the control chart this gets this gets hard hard yards and of course it'll get harder if suddenly he decides to adjust here because the minute he decides to do this because he's not happy with where his process is sitting he's just destroyed those four data points he has to put those four data points aside they, they are no longer valid because the process is now somewhere new, that's a different distribution. You have to start again. He starts measuring again. Same again. If he, if he adjusts again. Again, he destroys this, this distribution. He's destroyed now. The process is somewhere different. So you can see, he, he can't see this. This is very difficult for the technician to ever see. So actually, he can never know that he's got this thing centered. He, he might have a good guess, but that's exactly what it is. Another word for a good guess, he might get a good estimate. But he needs room. You need room for your, your technicians not to know where the process is because of the way the data comes at them. You can never know where the process is sitting. So, is this process necessarily going to wander backwards and forwards one and a half sigma? Not necessarily, but just those two reasons alone means that every time you look at your process, it's almost always going to look like it's somewhere new. So, that, And that gives the impression that it's wandering about by one and a half sigma. Now, there are real reasons why it might move. What would be the real reasons? Well, you might have... A new batch of material that might give it a that might give it a kick you might have a, a machine that warms up during the shift that might make it gradually drift one way and then of course you take a break you let the machine cool down again you come back after a 15 minute break the machines maybe wandered back a little bit and you run it again and again the machine goes for a little goes for a little wander so there are reasons why the one and a half sigma shift might apply in your company. But the point I would make is this. Bill Smith observed this for Motorola's processes. Does that mean your processes do the same? To be honest, I don't know. And neither do you. What you should do is what Bill Smith did. You should go and observe your own processes and understand how they move. And then you can decide whether you want Six Sigma or not. You can decide whether 3.4 defects per million is, is what you, you want to achieve or indeed whether it will move by 1.5 Sigma. If you do that, then you will understand your process. And that's what Bill Smith was doing. The one and a half Sigma shift it was just Motorola's understanding of their processes. Go and understand your process. Collect data, observe, take your hands off, take your time, learn how the process works, and then make it, make as much money as you possibly can. Because all of this stuff, 
all of what Bill Smith was about was about making the processes make more money. Go and observe your shift and then make more money in your processes. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper. It covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.